Anything that's about like skincare, but like culty is right up my alley. So it's kind of a bookception type of situation. I was really waiting for us to get to the plot. I've never filmed the bookshelf straight on before and it looks weird. What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. I thought it would be really fun to do a little check-in, like mid-year check-in type of situation. Um, I can't believe that 2024 is already halfway over. I feel like everybody says that all the time, like time goes by so fast. Genuinely, I feel like it was just January and now the year's half over. I just turned 30 in December 2023 and I'm like, I'm halfway through 30, like what? <laughs> insane to me. Anyway, I have not been keeping like an exact tally of, you know, how many books that I've read so far this year. I think it's like, I'm in the 30s, like 33, 34, something like that. I track everything in Storygraph. Like I don't have a reading goal. I'm not trying to hit 60, 70, 80 books in particular. I'm just trying to read books that I, I think I will enjoy. Um, I'm reading a lot for my Reading Around the World Challenge, which you guys may be getting sick of hearing about. I don't know. I did do um, a little haul recently. It was one of my last videos. Boyfriend and I are back from Taos, New Mexico. Um, and I did hit up three of the local bookstores there in town. Um, I did that little haul and then I have a few that I wanna talk about that I wanna read for summer. So we're gonna do a little summer TBR at the end um, after I kind of take you guys through everything that I've read so far this year. So hopefully you find some recommendations. So Storygraph is pretty awesome because if you go down to this second little tab at the bottom um, it takes you to it's like the little pie chart it takes you to your stats for the year and obviously you can change it like by the year we're just gonna go through um, 2024 so far obviously so 34 books so far this year 5,500 pages about 90 to 93 listening hours um, this is my little breakdown mostly dark mysterious reflective books emotional challenging that sounds about right I don't honestly look at this too much in terms of like the pace of the books that I'm reading and the page numbers and how long the audiobooks are, fiction versus nonfiction, um, because I don't know, that part just doesn't like really super interest me. Um, but I do like down here at the bottom, like the, the, the stats, you know, the breakdown of everything, um, like how many books and pages and hours and like looking at the little, the little line graphs is really fun. Average star rating so far this year out of the 34 books that I read is a 3.88 Which is good. I don't like it when it's too high because I feel like I'm being too too easy So I'm gonna filter it by earliest so we start in January and we're gonna go through kind of rapid fire So Death Valley by Melissa Broder. You, oh, it also gives you like the little like genres and like little like keywords like it's fiction It's contemporary. It's literary there's magical realism. Death Valley was good. It wasn't my favorite Melissa Broder. Um, she basically gets lost in the desert, the main character. Um, so I thought it was decent. If you like Broder, you'll probably like it, but I liked the Pisces um, and Milk Fed a lot more. And then we have a couple of the Girl from the Other Side mangas. You guys know I finished those um, in January and then I, I watched the anime. Um, on Crunchyroll. It's just so sweet. I'm not going to even talk about it. They're all a five star for me because I'm just, I'm obsessed with that anime. Um, and with that manga, I love it so much. It's so, so sweet. Um, it's like a dark fairy tale kind of vibe. Um, then I read Neuromancer. This was, I guess, part of a series. It says Sprawl number one. I always forget it's part of a series. Um, this was a gift from my brother. It was either Christmas or birthday gift. Neuromancer was interesting. Um, <laughs> it's so difficult to describe. It was so ahead of its time. Fascinating for many, many reasons. Did I understand fully everything that I was reading? Not really. But I thought it was an interesting read. Um, and I would go in again if I had, now that I have like kind of know what happens and had more context. Um, definitely make sure you're like a hard science fiction fan. Um, before you go in or you're not really gonna like that one. The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector. I have a prettier cover here than the one that is on my story graph. Um, this one right here. I love these modern penguin classics. I'm about to do like a whole, I'm about to buy a whole bunch of these and just have a whole shelf of them. I love the design of them so much, the cover design. Um, very interesting, super thin, less than 100 pages. Could I really tell you exactly what happens? No. Um, it's one of those kind of like stream of consciousness style 
books that isn't really my favorite. Um, she was for my reading around the world challenge for Brazil. Um, yeah, it, very literary, very, I don't even know how to describe it. I gave it four stars. So like clearly I liked it and I enjoyed my time. She's an incredible writer. Um, people will review her books and say that they're like their Bible. Um, like some people, she has some cult fans out there. You'll just have to read, you'll have to read the description for that one before you decide if you're gonna go in on that one or not. The Membranes, absolutely fascinating. Highly recommend. One of the few five stars um, this month so far, or this year so far. It is from Taiwan. It's a Taiwanese novel, science fiction. It's set in the future where we've migrated underground, underwater actually, um, to these like domes underwater due to climate change. Um, but it's so much more than that. The twist knocked me off my feet. I don't know that I've ever been as surprised by a twist before. It's like up there with like the Fight Club twist. It's so good. Then the Ice Palace, again, I have a prettier cover. Um, this was for Norway or Sweden. Yeah, Norway takes place on the Norwegian fjords. It's about two young girls who have this really like instant connection, um, like right upon meeting and they become very, very fast friends. Um, and then one of them goes missing in this like giant frozen waterfall, which is what the title is referring to. I thought it was really good. For such a slim novel, he really like covers a lot. And I feel like it's rare that a male author, like you really do feel like he's genuinely writing from a female perspective. Like, I just feel like that's, sometimes you can tell when a male author is writing a female character, if you know what I mean. Um, and he did a really good job. Besos, Tarje, Tarje Besos. Big Swiss was kind of a disappointment. We're getting into February now. Um, Jen Began, I've never read her before. Honestly, the, <laughs> the cover um, is really what interested me. I listened to the audiobook. it has decent narrators, but I just feel like, I don't know, like not a lot happened. It was just kind of one of those like slice of life type books. I feel like it's kind of like a normal people by Sally Rooney type of situation where you can't really say a lot happens. It's just like about the drama between the characters. So The Seed of the Soul was really interesting by Gary Zukov. Zu Zukov. It's like a philosophy sort of, not really self-help, that's kind of how it's like pegged, but I don't know that that really makes sense. It's his idea of like what the soul is, what it's made of. Um, he talks about how humans have individual souls, but animals share like a group soul. And it's all to be taken with a grain of salt because like obviously nobody really knows any of this, but it was it's fascinating. It's interesting just to um, kind of go inside the mind of somebody, somebody um, and see what they think about um, the soul. So if you're wanting something that's a little bit more kind of like spiritual and like a little bit left of center, you might really like that one. Then Rouge by Mona Awad. I listened to the audiobook of this. I only gave it a 3.5. In retrospect, I think it may deserve a higher rating, like maybe a four star. Um, it's so good. Mona Awad is so, <laughs> she's, she's, she's an interesting one. Um, Bunny is her more like popular one. Rouge was really good. It's culty. It's trippy. It's, it was compared to Eyes Wide Shut, the Tom Cruise film. Um, Tom Cruise himself kind of has a starring role because our main character is like delusional and thinks she's dating him. Um, yeah, it was very, it's, I describe it like a trick mirror. It feels like you're walking into like a, like a circus mirror, if that makes any sense. I would read it again. I thought it was really fascinating. Fall of the House of Usher, that was a quick read um, in preparation for What Moves the Dead, which I did not love. Um, I didn't DNF it, but only because the audiobook was so short. It was only a five hour audiobook. Didn't love this one at all. Didn't like it. Don't recommend. Then Voices by David Elliott. This is um, like a Joan of Arc story. Um, it's interesting the way that he wrote the, it's basically like poems kind of like prose poems, um, but they're all like, each one is like shaped to look like something different, which is really cool. Like there's one that looks like the shape of a sword and then one that looks like the shape of, you know, I don't know, like a candle or whatever. Um, so if you like Joan of Arc, if you want to know a little bit more about her story, that would be a really fun one. It's entertaining because obviously the, the writing is really interesting. He kind of wrote in the tradition of the time. It's a YA, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it is like for younger readers, but I enjoyed it. Soul Talk Song Language. This was Conversations with Joy Harjo. She's been the US Poet Laureate like two times running. Um, so if you like Native American poetry, um, it was really interesting to kind of 
take a deep dive into her like her process and her style minor detail by adanya shibli this was a really short one and this one was for uh, palestine for my reading around the world challenge pretty dark not gonna lie um lots of trigger warnings for all sorts of different things you're gonna want to click into this one um to see you know what some of those warnings are um and another ending that just like takes your breath away so you're gonna want to be prepared for that one thrust by lydia yoknovich i've had this on my tbr for so so long um, the cover is fascinating. I thought, oh, the, the audiobook is on Spotify. I'm gonna listen to this one. I thought it was okay. I gave it a 3.5. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting. It's one of those books where you kind of feel like you're just reading, um, it, it goes through like a different character e with each chapter. Like the author was just kind of stating her opinion through the guise of these characters. Um, and so she was sort of like ruminating on life through her characters. I didn't really find that there there was like a, a really clear storyline. Okay, camera died. We may have moved slightly. Um, I think I was finishing talking about Thrust. It basically just wasn't exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Um, it was a lot more of like the author giving her opinion about things via her characters. Um, and all of their um, like storylines are supposed to be connected, but I felt like the connections were like pretty tenuous. It's, I mean, it's cool. The setting is cool. It takes place in like post climate change so like the world has flooded you can go tour like the torch of the statue of liberty because that's how high the waters have risen it would have been cool what i wanted was to get more time with our young female main character lysve lysva um she was really interesting she could like time travel with like a coin or something it was like her whole storyline was completely underexplored i thought and she ends up inside like the belly of a whale at one point it has sort of that like folklore kind of biblical allegory kind of vibe to it it just could have been so cool if we had focused more on her but we didn't then earthlings by sayaka Murata. this is like i feel like it's one of those books that really had its moment um on the internet on booktube um it is weird it's wacky especially the ending um but this is about um a young girl and she's just She's, she kind of feels like, I don't know if it was exactly supposed to be like she was maybe autistic or something or neurodivergent in some way, but she just feels very separate from other people and it's about her just trying to connect um, with people. And definitely trigger warning for this one. Um, yeah, you're gonna wanna check the trigger warnings for that one. It, it was, yeah, there's um, some stuff in there that's not, not great to read. Um, so anyway, just do a little bit of research before you dive into that one. Then Paradise Rot by Jenny Haval. She's a Norwegian author. Um, I loved this one. Body horror, two girls um, in like an abandoned warehouse um, living there because it's cheaper than living at the university that they're both attending. Um, very, <laughs> you're adorable. Do you want to go outside? Is that what you're telling me? This is what I have to deal with. It's really hot. So I'm not going to take you up. He's so freaking adorable. Um, so if you like body horror vibes, it's LGBTQ. Um, basically it's Haval's exploration of like the female body, but in like a very dark, twisted, kind of grotesque sort of way. Um, the couple of times that I've talked about this one on my channel, I do mention the fruit metaphors. Because there, there, there's a plethora. American Primitive by Mary Oliver. If you have somehow managed to not read any Oliver, like me, this was like one of my first ones that I'd read by her. Um, I think the only other one I'd read before was um, her essays. It's over there somewhere. Upstream? I did like Upstream too. She's an amazing poet. Um, if you just need some nature poems or essays to just kind of like bring you back to life <laughs> um, and remind you of just the beauty of nature and the beauty of life. I highly recommend Oliver's work. I want to read all of it. Julia by Sandra Newman. This was a really interesting 1984 retelling from Julia's perspective. If you've never read 1984, this is going to be one that you you would want to wait to read after. I don't know that I'd necessarily recommend reading it before because you're not necessarily going to, you're not probably going to understand all of the references um, <laughs> if you haven't read 1984 yet. But 1984 is one of my favorite books. I've talked about this so many times. I'm obsessed with it, so I really loved this. Um, seeing from her perspective, 
it was so much more layered and detailed than I thought it was going to be. I really did think it was just kind of going to be, you know, little snippets of what she was doing um, in the scenes where they weren't together. But it's so much more than that. Like, she, she had a lot going on. She was very clever um, and kind of conniving, which makes total sense. I feel like that's exactly how Julia would have been. So, um, it was a really good audiobook. I loved the um, narration. I can't remember who it was narrated by, but she did a really good job. It's a nice, classic sort of modern dystopian novel um, for fans of 1984. Then Pocahontas, Medicine Woman, Spy, what else does it say on there? Entrepreneur and something else, Diplomat. Um, if you wanna know what is essentially gonna be the closest thing we ever get to like the truth, like a true story about Pocahontas and who she was, highly recommend this book. It's by Polygon Allen who essentially started like Native American studies um, at least at the collegiate level, I'm pretty sure. I, I might be wrong, don't quote me on that, but um, this was really good, it's a, it's a biography basically. But what Gun Allen does is she tells it through the perspective of a, like the, a Powhatan lens, like the, like a Native American lens. Um, and so we get a lot of context that we didn't get when, you know, you read something like the journals of Captain John Smith, which is where we heard about Pocahontas for the first time. This is really, an, an interesting piece of literature because you know we need kind of both sides of the story but there's so much that the English and the Spanish you know when they came over they didn't understand there was no there was literally there was a language barrier the culture was so different everything about it was like alien and new she takes us through all of the various like rites or ceremonies that Pocahontas would have been a part of. That wasn't even her real name. That was like a like a nickname she had as a child. Her actual real name was Matoka. And then she gets another name later, obviously, as Rebecca Rolfe when she marries John Rolfe. So anyway, um, she was just a fascinating woman in history. So if you if your only like knowledge of Pocahontas and who she was is basically like the Disney film, highly recommend reading this one. Then Super Doom by Melissa Broder, another Broder. I'm trying to get through all her stuff because um, I really like her fiction, but I was not a fan of her poetry. Um, so this was like a random um, assortment of collected poems from like her four previous poetry collections, which I believe are out of print now. Um, it was it was okay. There was three or four that I felt like I sort of understood or got something out of. Wouldn't recommend it. Confession of the Lioness by Mia Kyoto, Ko Kuoto, I still don't know how to say his last name. Um, this was for, for my Reading Around the World challenge, Mozambique, it was for Mozambique. Um, really interesting kind of magical realism sort of vibes with this one. Basically, um, some lionesses are killing some of the villagers um, in this really remote village in Mozambique. And so they hire a hunter to come in to try to figure out what's going on. But the, the lionesses are acting kind of strangely, like there's some strangely human behavior. Um, and so it's kind of like, is it people? Like other villagers pretending to be lions? Are there murderers on the loose? Is it really just the lions? Like what's going on? Um, I thought that one was really fascinating. It's told from the perspective of our main character whose sister has been killed by one of the lionesses um, and then the hunter himself. So I thought it was kind of an interesting um, kind of dual perspective. Then Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. Olga Tokarczuk. Um, this was for Poland. Somebody did recommend this one um, to me, so thank you. It won a Pulitzer, and I can see why. Um, it definitely has a lot of um, like Polish history in it um, and lots of different metaphors. I feel like it was one of those that went over my head a little bit because of the magical realism elements. Um, and just because I have like basically no background knowledge of Polish history or culture um, But it was a good it was a good audiobook. I liked the the narrator of the audiobook. She was great um, And this the story is still really fascinating. It's kind of a whodunit. I went in pretty blindly So I like had no idea what to expect um, but one of her neighbors named Bigfoot <laughs> winds up going uh, Not missing he's murdered um, and so the the old lady <laughs> main character, she um, Janina is her name. She she tries to solve and figure out what's going on. So I thought it was it was interesting. Not my favorite, but it checked the box for Poland for my reading around the world challenge. Then the Atlas Paradox. I freaking love the Atlas Six trilogy. Haven't read the third book yet. It's out in hardback. Well, I almost bought it the other day, but my other two copies are in uh, paperback. 
so I don't want to, I don't want to hardback, you know, when I've got two other paperbacks. So I'm gonna wait until, um, is it called the Atlas? What is the third one called? The Atlas Complex. So when the Atlas Complex, which is the third and final book, I believe, when it comes out in paperback, I'll buy it. Um, if you love a good, like, dark academic vibe um, and drama between, you know, the all of our main characters, um, then you'll really like them. There's decent pacing. I will say the writing, it gets a little wordy. She loves her, her synonyms. She loves her thesaurus. But I do love the storyline. I love some magic. I love, again, a dark academic setting. Um, the second one has a little bit to do with time, sort of a wormhole type of situation happening. Um, so I do love those. If you've managed to somehow not hear about those or not read those. Unix and Nymphomaniacs was the third and final in the Oxygen Thief Diaries series. Um, it was okay. I kind of felt like these books were all kind of a repeat of each other. Um, so if you're curious about the whole vibe for the Oxygen Thief, um, you could probably just read the first one and be done with it. They are definitely for like adult readers. It's basically about a man who just wants to sleep with every woman that he lays his eyes on. <laughs> he's, um, he's an alcoholic. He's a writer trying to publish, um, self-publish the book that you're reading, the diary of an Oxygen Thief book. So it's kind of a bookception type of situation. If you really like kind of messed up main characters um, who just have almost no redeeming qualities, then you might like those books. Then I read two by Dave Ramsey about finances. So Total Money Makeover and Baby Steps Millionaires. These are really good if you have no idea what you're doing with your finances and you just need somebody who has gone bankrupt once and did everything kind of the wrong way and then had to build everything up again um, on a more like rock solid foundation and who knows his stuff. Ramsey is, is a good guy um, to, you know, to read from. I don't follow absolutely everything that he says. I do love the debt snowball. I think that's great. Um, I don't love that he's not a big fan of credit cards because credit cards can be amazing if you use them like debit cards um, and you don't get yourself into debt because of the points and stuff. Like boyfriend and I just went to Taos, New Mexico, like I mentioned earlier, on credit card points. We did not pay for the hotel, but a lot of people do get themselves into debt. Um, so you have to be super, super careful. But anyway, if you have like, no knowledge really of um, what to do with your money and how to invest and you know the type of loans that you should be getting like mortgages and that kind of thing and, and how to budget and all that stuff these are really these are really great then another for my reading around the world challenge this was season of migration to the north um, for Sudan I believe this one was interesting it was kind of a story within a story where we have like our main character who's come back to his village on the Nile River um, after spending like five years away at university, um, like in Europe, I believe. And so he comes back and there's a stranger in town who's been living there for a while. And so we get his story when he was a young man and he was like um, an up and coming economist in London. We see how the meeting of these two people has consequences for our main character. Um, and his life very quickly changes because of Mustafa's actions. So if you like that kind of thing, then you'll probably like Season of Migration to the North. Then we have one that was almost a DNF. Um, we Play Ourselves by Jen Silverman. That's one of the ones I have up here um, that is for sale. I put it up on eBay. Um, I gave it 2.5 stars, was not a big fan of this. It's billed like a fight club, like a female fight club like a gender swapped fight club, basically. That's like the whole pitch of the synopsis. Um, and we don't really get that at all. Our main character was a playwright in New York and she like had her play fail. And then she was like weirdly jealous of some other up and coming playwrights. And so anyway, she has to just like get away and get out of town. So she flies across the country to go stay with a friend in California. Um, and it's kind of like her trying to find her feet again and kind of throwing herself a little bit of a pity party. Um, there's a lot of drama between her roommate, um, the friend and his boyfriend. Like we get a lot of like their relationship drama that I didn't really find was necessary at all. Like I was really waiting for us to get to the plot. Um, and it's really just kind of more of a self discovery type of novel where um, it's more of like realizations that the, the character is having um, about her life and that kind of thing. Not so much anything to do with the plot or the fight club that's mentioned in the synopsis. So 
I almost DNF'd that one. Then The Road by Cormac McCarthy. So we were able to follow up with a five star, which I do love. Um, this is really good. Uh, I love, 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 love um, The Road. It's so dark. It's, it's a dystopian novel for sure. It basically takes place after some sort of like nuclear event has caused the collapse of society. And it's a man and his son, um, simply called the man and the boy in the book, trying to survive day to day. So I would say like 80, 85% of the book is literally just them kind of pushing a cart of their things through the ashes. Um, but the writing is stellar. It's so, so good. It's pretty short too. The, the audiobook's like less than seven hours. And you get these beautiful lines every now and then, just like these gut punch lines. All of the like humdrum day to day, very dark, bleak, kind of living through this existence sort of stuff. Um, was really lightened by these moments of just like beauty and realizations that the man is having. Just having all of those existential thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I, the writing definitely kept me, kept me going, even though the story itself is quite bleak. Then we have another Jenny Haval, Girls Against God. Um, like I mentioned before, I prefer Paradise Rot to this one. This says that it's a novel, like it says that it's a book, you know. Um, a novel about magic, writing, and art set in the 1990s in Norway. Like, that's, that's, that's the description, but it's really, it's really not. Again, it's kind of one of those books where the author is, is, has a lot of thoughts to share, and so they just kind of create some, some cardboard characters in order to express their own opinions about the world. There's hardly any plot in this. It's really just Haval's um, kind of musings on art and music. She's a, a musician in, in Norway. I said in my wrap-up for May that this should have been an essay collection and she could have just shared those thoughts more directly instead of having to tell them through the like conduit of a character who's like not really fully developed. So anyway, it was okay. And then the one that I just finished um, was The Palace of Dreams by Ismail Kadar. Kader. This is for um, Albania for my Reading Around the World Challenge. I thought this one was really unique. It was a little short. It's only about 200 pages, so I felt like a lot of it was a it was a bit underdeveloped, um, and that's the only reason why I took some some stars away. But it's really interesting. It's about this ministry called the Palace of Dreams, and they interpret the dreams of the the people um, to try to find the master dream that could unlock some sort of like key for the future or um you know they try to use the dreams of the people to maybe prevent war or plague or to advance themselves technologically it's a really fascinating concept it's a bit abstract but i liked how it, it actually feels very much like um you know sort of a nine to five like office job like our main character mark allen is basically stuck in a cubicle um and the author basically said that he was inspired by like dante and virgil and all of these you know prolific authors from centuries before creating works that were essentially describing hell and so he said this <laughs> the palace of dreams is his version of that like his own version of hell um so i guess like a nine to five office type job is his his definition of hell which i think a lot of us could probably agree with so anyway that is what my reading is looking like so far this year before i get into my june or like summer tbr you guys let me know quickly in the comments um if you've read any of those or which one you might read um and then let me know if you've had like a favorite so far this year now quickly i'm gonna go through a few that i want to get to this summer this is not going to be a super long list um, because there's actually quite a few things that I need to order. Um, I have a, I think I mentioned this already, but the Penguin Modern Classics. I want a whole shelf of these. I just love their covers so, so much. So I do have an order that I'm going to put in soon, I think. Two that I'm going to take with me, um, to Florida. We are renting an RV and driving it down to Florida, um, here in a couple of weeks. And, um, I am going to have <laughs> a 12 hour drive. Um, which part of that I will be driving, but part of it I won't be. Um, and so obviously I'll want to keep myself busy while we're driving. And then obviously when we're on the beach, I'm not a big fan of like getting into the water. Um, a big thing that I really like to do is just to read on the beach. That's what I did. Um, pretty much all of what I did when I was spending time on the beach, like two summers ago when I went like on our annual girls trip, I just read on the beach. Um, <laughs> so that's what I'm planning on doing again this year. 
And it's kind of funny. I read a Julia Armfield. I read Our Wives Under the Sea, which is so, so good. It's one of my favorite books um, about, I don't know, like the ocean. It's very kind of Lovecrafty and creepy. I realized I had another Julia Armfield on my shelf. So now that I'm going back to Florida, I feel like I can, I don't know, there's something kind of like, what's the word? Full circle about that. So I'm gonna read Salt Slow. This is actually a short story collection. So it says, she blends horror, science fiction, mythology, and feminism. It sounds really good. It sounds kind of speculative. Obviously there's, like it says, science fiction and horror. So I have a feeling it's gonna be a similar vibe to Our Wives Under the Sea, which also had some kind of body horror elements to it for sure. So anyway, I think I'm really gonna enjoy this one. And then, um, kind of following along with like a water theme, it's Venomous Lump Sucker by Ned Bowman. I don't know, it sounds really interesting. It's supposedly, it's a satire of the failure of the carbon offset project. So this is a science fiction um, and it takes place in a world where two people, there's a mining executive and an animal cognition scientist, kind of have to like work together to pursue the lump sucker, this guy, across the strange landscapes of near future Europe, a nature reserve full of toxic waste, a floating city on the Baltic Sea, the lethal hinterlands of a totalitarian state. From what I recall, it doesn't actually say in this particular synopsis, um, corporations are like trying to save extinct animals or something. It's kind of like a global warming, carbon offset, high tech, futuristic satire. Then I also wanna read um, Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. This is such a cool cover. I love it so, so much. Anything that's about like skincare, but like culty is right up my alley. I think it reminds me a little bit of Rouge by Mona Awad. An accident leaves her parents debilitated, so she, the main character, abandons her future for a job at a high-end beauty and wellness shop in NYC. The store is called Holistic. It's known for its remarkable products and procedures, and the new job affords her entry into a world of privilege. She becomes transfixed by the owner of this um, company. As all the while, our narrator is plied with products that slim her thighs, smooth her skin, and lighten her hair, but beneath these creams and tinctures lies something sinister. So it kind of feels like it's gonna have sort of a culty, sort of like twist to it. I don't know. So that's natural beauty. And I know that was literally only like three books, but I think that's kind of like the main ones that I want to get to this summer just because they feel summery, if that makes any sense. Um, I really go off like the vibe of the cover. Um, but anyway, if you guys have anything that you are excited to read this summer, definitely leave it in the comments and let us all know. And I will see you guys in my next video. I'm